Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Krauss, and in this episode, we're going to digest in introductory form parts of Plato's Republic. We will begin by assessing the noble lie. One of the core myths in Plato's Republic is the myth of the noble lie. The noble lie is a much discussed moment in the work. Does Plato advocate noble lies? How does this square with Plato's commitment to truth? What are we to make of the noble lie which Socrates justifies? It is important to remember irony, which we covered in another episode, when reading Plato, especially here in the Republic. The noble lie situates itself in the broader context of Platonic irony throughout Plato's corpus. Thus, the noble lie is tied to irony in Plato's examination of states and orderly societies. In fact, Plato is revealing a profound truth about how societies are structured and run in the noble lie. Thus, we will begin to see how Plato unites his idea of the noble lie with his commitment to truth, the truth about how political societies operate. Socrates' justification of the noble lie isn't because Socrates is advocating for lies. Socrates' justification of the noble lie is meant to reveal a reality about polities and politics for us. Again, using irony, the truth is signified to us through the lie itself. Plato is arguing here that for societies to properly function, there needs to be a grandstanding story, a noble myth or lie that unites the people together. People need to believe in things, in something, in anything, to avoid the slide into nihilism and meaninglessness which ultimately leads to tyranny. The survival of the politeia is at stake if there is no grand myth or story for people to latch onto and believe themselves inhabiting or occupying. In other words, Plato is saying that all nations, peoples, and polities exist on myths, on stories. The myth of British chosenness the myth of American exceptionalism, the myth of Russia as the third Rome, the myth of celestial destiny under the heavenly skies in China, the myth of divine sanction for Rome. And on and on we go throughout the history of stories and myths being utilized to justify a nation's or people's existence and actions. This is the truth being communicated by Plato through the noble lie. More recent times have seen variations of this myth. Rousseau's social contract discusses the need for civil religion to unite disparate people. We might look at the United States as prime example of civic constitutional religion. The founding fathers as sort of prophet figures the Declaration and Constitution and Federalist Papers as the Holy Scriptures, the Presidency or the Presidential Office as the holiest of holies that shouldn't be polluted but respected, the Congress and Supreme Court as temples, etc. What unites the disparate strand and multitude of Americans is this civil and civic religion. Belief in the goodness of America, her Constitution, her constitutional establishment, which has a secularized religious embodiment or nature to it. One might also look to the British Empire and the idea of British mystical imperialism and the civilizing mission as another example. The British peoples were chosen through their lineage of Anglo-Saxon liberty to gospel Protestantism to bring liberty and civilization to the world which justified the nation's existence and imperial conquests. In its most extreme form, there is even the strand of British 
Israelism that links the nation of England and the English monarchy and the British Commonwealth as the prophesied company of nations in Genesis 35. The loss of this noble lie has done irrevocable harm to the British peoples who are lost in a sea of meaninglessness without some grandstanding myth to unite them and to justify them. Going back to the United States, for an instance, the idea of the goodness of America, her constitution, and her constitutional establishment is, as we know, in the year 2021, under great siege by those who disagree with the story. And without that story, you see the fabric of society tearing itself apart. Extrapolating out further, one can say any coherent or systematic movement needs a narrative that would be bringing up Plato's noble lie to modern parlance. We all live by narratives, by stories we tell ourselves. For that is what a myth is, a narrative, a story, a hermeneutic, a proclamation to make sense of the self and the world we occupy. Today's politically activist movements have their myths just as states have their myths. The functioning polity, indeed the utopian polity, has its myths too. Look at all the supposed utopian states or attempted utopian states in our history. They all had their noble lies, their mythic stories, which justified their position, power, and constitution of society. Plato is, therefore, not advocating lying for lying's sake. What Plato is trying to show in the noble lie is how such noble myths are necessary for functioning polities, and how without such myths, polities fall apart and disintegrate. Therefore, it is important for people to believe in myths propagated for the collective good. This is what politicians and political organizations do all the time. One could read Thucydides' History of the Peloponnesian War to see this firsthand, with Athens' apologia for its empire before the declaration of war between Sparta and Athens at the close of the first book, or with Pericles' famous funeral oration given in the second book. It is remarkable, all things considered, that Plato, some 2400 years ago, was right about how polities sustain themselves using noble lies and how all coherent systems must give themselves a narrative to make sense of themselves. In other words, or simply as Plato suggested, polities and coherent movements understand and sustain themselves through the stories they craft for themselves. Understanding this can help us begin to look out into the world to see other noble lies offered up for the coherency of the whole or for the coherency of a particular movement. Thus, Plato's noble lie extends far beyond the pages of the Republic and helps us how to think and relate to the world we live in today. As Jacques Derrida said about understanding Plato's lie, we can understand it either as a medicine or a poison to the world and to life. That is, once we understand what Plato is informing us about, the purpose of the noble lie, we must wrestle with whether such noble myths are helpful or hurtful to people to society, and to the world. Of course, Plato is suggesting that the noble lie tells us and reveals the profound truth about politics and society. It is, in fact, the medicine we need in order to live a coherent, peaceful, and meaningful life in society. Yet again, we see the essential value in Plato teaching us how to think instead of necessarily what to think. Plato doesn't give a universal noble lie for all peoples to follow. Instead, he is making us think about the noble lie 
and how our own societies operate through them.